Hello, welcome to BMC. I'm Dr. M. Today we are going to cover the things that you need to look out for if you are concerned about your cat or dog possibly having diabetes mellitus. So join me, you'll learn something. We should first cover what diabetes is. So the body is made up of a number of different types of cells, but the thing that binds all of these cells together is that they need a source of energy. And for energy in order to function, our cells often use sugar, glucose. However, some cells are also capable of using fat from the body, but not all of them. And I think about like the brain and the central nervous system in general, it really does rely on having sugar in those cells in order to make them function properly. So in a normal pet, what happens is food is ingested, the GI tract starts breaking it down, once the carbohydrates are broken down into their different sugars that is absorbed into the bloodstream. Then what happens is we need the pancreas to produce a number of different hormones, one of them being insulin. And the reason insulin is important is because it enables the individual cells to absorb the glucose from the bloodstream into the cells themselves so that they can be powered to do the functions we rely on them to do. So when we have the disease of diabetes mellitus, that results in there being a lower than normal amount of insulin present or maybe even no insulin at all being present. And so the cells are unable to get the glucose out of the bloodstream. That results in there being a lot of sugar circulating around the body in the bloodstream. Now usually when the kidneys are filtering blood in order to take out things that the body wants removed, it will preserve the glucose as it knows that the body needs it in order to function. However, there will be so much glucose in the bloodstream that the kidney will be overwhelmed and some of that glucose leaks into the urine. So glucose then osmotically brings some water with it, which dilutes the urine more than is normal. Then because the animal is urinating more than is normal, they try to compensate in order to prevent themselves from being dehydrated and they start drinking more than normal. This is one of the reasons why when people talk about restricting their pet's water intake, I inform them that that is not an advised thing to do and actually can be quite dangerous because the vast majority of the cases are where the animal is urinating more than normal and the drinking is actually compensatory in an attempt to keep the animal hydrated. If you restrict their water, they become dehydrated, which can damage the kidneys and cause a lot of other major problems. So if your animal is ever urinating more than is normal, you need to give them as much water as they think they need and see a veterinarian as soon as possible to figure out why there's so much urine. Treating that will then resolve the drinking side of things. So the next thing that the animal will feel is an increased appetite because all of their cells are actually starving. There's tons of glucose in the bloodstream, but none of it is getting into the rest of the body to feed it. And so the animal is being sent signals that their body is starving because the cells are. And so as a result, they start eating more, the body also starts to mobilize fat in order to try with the cells that can use fat as energy to try to give those cells something, anything to keep functioning a little bit better and to try to keep the animal alive. So you will see weight loss and an increased appetite in animals that are diabetic as their body is trying to compensate. So when we're discussing common signs and symptoms to look for in animals that have diabetes. We will very, very commonly see polyuria, so they're urinating more often. As we talked about, this is because of excess sugar in the urine that's pulling water with it and causing the animal to urinate more frequently. Because the urine is being diluted with more water than is normal, this makes the animal 
more likely to get urinary tract infections and having all that sugar in the urine also helps bacteria to grow which further predisposes them to UTIs. Because of all of that urination, they are drinking more to try to compensate. We call that polydipsia. So they are PU, PD, polyuric, and polydipsic. On top of all of that, they are losing weight, but they also act like they are hungry all the time. And it's important that these pets get medical attention as quickly as we are able to. Um, if they are otherwise stable, it's not an emergency, but there are some cases where they will have been diabetic for long enough, and then as a result, they become ketoacidotic. So their body gets so run down and starved that it's unable to keep itself at the proper pH that all of the cells need to function, and so it becomes more acid than usual the ph becomes lower and as a result this becomes an emergent crisis so ketoacidosis will make the animal incredibly incredibly sick and usually they require hospitalized care with a cri of insulin in order to try to get them out of that ketoacidotic state and into a more stable one so we diagnose diabetes by running a blood work panel to check for organ function and blood sugar levels. And we also need to check a urinalysis, both to see if there's glucose in the urine, there might even be ketones in the urine, which makes us worry a lot more about the stability of the pet. And we're also checking for a urinary tract infection and to make sure that, you know, there's not something like kidney malfunction going on which can cause similar symptoms. Now we're going to talk specifically about dogs for a minute because diabetes in cats and dogs do look a little bit different from each other. So when we have a diabetic dog, they will need insulin injections. It's usually every 12 hours that this needs to happen. There are also prescription diets. Generally, these diets have more uh, fiber and a very careful formulation of the amount of carbohydrates in them and the type of carbohydrates so that you get a much more steady and even blood glucose level just because of the type of food that the dog is now being fed and they will need a very 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 stable and predictable amount and type of food at the exact same time every day in order to start to regulate them and sort out how much insulin they need. Dogs are also different than cats and they will actually lose their vision when they are diabetic. Glucose in the lens of the eye is used to feed the lens cells, but when there's too much of it, some of it will be changed into a different sugar called sorbitol, and that will change the lens opacity, and the opacity will be decreased until it is opaque. They develop a cataract and they will go blind over a period of time once they are diabetic. Now this is a problem because these cataracts can cause eye pressure issues and inflammation in the eye. So seeing a veterinary ophthalmologist is always recommended for diabetic dogs. Very excitingly, ophthalmologists can remove that cataract from the eye and they can put in an artificial lens and when that is done, then your pet's vision is restored. It's actually my favorite surgery ever because the pet goes under general anesthesia unable to see and when they wake up and they realize that they can see the expression on their face is just so beautiful and i would always apologize and be like you know i'm sorry you're seeing my face <laughs> as you wake up here it is a truly fantastic thing that we can do for these dogs but i know that doing this surgery isn't possible for all people now some dogs will do well when they are blind and there are different considerations that you need when you have a blind pet but it's possible to help them with that but if you are in a situation where your dog has these cataracts has lost their vision 
and they're just not coping, this does become a quality of life issue. Some dogs will become very fearful and jumpy and in that quality of life situation sometimes humane euthanasia is needed to be discussed because the pet is no longer happy and their quality of life is suffering. Now cats, of course, they have to be a little bit different. <laughs> Sometimes I joke they're like little aliens because they have so many little idiosyncrasies. I just love that about them. <laughs> the fascinating thing about cats is that their diabetes is not always permanent. With very aggressive intervention, and if you can maintain a lean body condition score, and if you can change their diet, there are prescription formulas for diabetic cats as well. They are a bit different than for dogs because with the dogs we really focus on stabilizing that blood glucose. With cats, if we give them very specific amounts of protein and carbs and it seems that a canned formulation can help a bit more than kibble in this specific situation, sometimes we can use insulin for a while, get them regulated, and their diabetes can actually go into remission, which is amazing. It can also make knowing what they need a bit challenging, and there will be some cats that no longer need insulin, but they might need medication by mouth as they might have like very mild symptoms and blood glucose issues, but they no longer require that insulin. And so it is important to seek veterinary care for your cat as soon as you can if you're noticing that they're having any of the symptoms we talked about at the beginning of the video. Now I want to make one thing incredibly clear here. Feeding a higher protein, lower carbohydrate canned food diet does not prevent diabetes. I see that misconception going around all the time. It's only to be used as treatment for the cats that have already developed diabetes. Feel free to watch my cat can versus kibble video here. It explains the research that we have. Now your veterinarian will need to be doing blood glucose curves, which is taking a blood sample every one to two hours for at least 12 hours in a row preferably longer where possible, but these curves need to be done every few weeks until the animal is stabilized and we've sorted out what their individual insulin needs are. You can also monitor blood glucose levels with a continuous glucose monitor. These are fantastic devices. You stick it directly to the skin of the animal and it has a little needle that just goes into the skin and it measures the glucose levels in that pet 24 seven. And you can send that data using an app to your veterinarian, which is so helpful. These devices provide better idea of what their blood glucose is actually doing when you compare it to a curve because the stress of having the blood draw can elevate the blood glucose level and then that makes judging how regulated they are more challenging. You can have artificial elevation in blood glucose for a variety of different reasons and you can also see something called the Samoji effect where their insulin is actually too high and so after they've been given too much insulin their blood glucose starts to go down and the body doesn't want hypoglycemia which in the short term can be life-threatening and so it will dump a bunch of glucose into the bloodstream to try to compensate for this which means that the levels then skyrocket and if you happen to do a spot check in that moment you're going to think oh I'm not giving enough insulin you're going to give more and you're going to make this problem worse and if a pet receives too much insulin they can become very hypoglycemic and that can cause a seizure and they can die from hypoglycemia. So it is far better to be a little bit cautious with the amount of insulin we are giving and do proper curves and slowly increase the amount of insulin. Of course, having high blood glucose levels for the long term is also harming the pet. You know, their cells aren't getting the energy they need. This isn't good for them, but it is not immediately life-threatening like hypoglycemia is. 
So if there's ever a case where your pet doesn't eat, your veterinarian should have advised you that in those cases, do not give the insulin. If they're not eating, don't give insulin. You're noticing that any of the symptoms we talked about before, urinating more, drinking more, eating more, losing weight, losing muscle mass, if you're seeing any of those things, those are indicators that your pet may no longer be well managed with their diabetes. Over time, their insulin needs often change. And if they have any other disease process going on, if they are sick, and stressed for any other reason that can throw their diabetes management out of whack. There's a hard time going on trying to regulate your pet to get their diabetes managed. That should trigger a medical workup to go on the hunt to find out what else is causing your pet to have stress in their body. You can see an internal medicine specialist as they can have a few more tricks and diagnostic capabilities to help us out when the GP veterinarians like myself have done what we're able to. I hope that you have learned something about what signs and symptoms to watch for and what to expect if your pet is diagnosed as diabetic. This was a subject that was requested to be covered a while ago. If you have something that you would like me to cover, please comment it down below. I always love to hear from you. And I put out a new video most Fridays, so I hope that you'll come back, join us next week. I look forward to seeing you then. Bye.